The histogram. You know that little wonky thing up here, this little data center that looks like math and graphs that you ran away from in high school? Well, this thing can actually be very helpful for you in your workflow. Whoa, shut the front door. You can edit with this thing. The histogram in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom is a very powerful tool, not just because it shows you where you can see the data and how that data is resting in your image, but there's also three capabilities with this histogram that you probably aren't using that could really help you in your workflow today. I'm gonna jump right into this and start talking about what the histogram is and how it can help you first before I jump into the three tips. The histogram. It's basically a data center. It's a graph that shows you exactly where the data is resting in your images as far as the pixel values are concerned from zero to 255 in the red, green, and blue categories. Say that 10 times fast. That would mean zero to 255 red, zero to 255 green, and zero to 255 blue. It's basically a data association to a pixel that says this pixel has this value of red, this value of green, and this value of blue. When R, G, and B all come together, it creates luminance data. But individually, that color data can be helpful to understand just what colors are available in an individual pixel. How often do we actually go to the individual pixel? Rarely, if ever. But if you take all that pixel data of all the millions and billions of pixels in your image and you combine them together, it creates this fancy little graph that shows us if our image is too light or too dark or could use some help. So if we look at this, look at this image here. This image is clearly underexposed. And when we look at the histogram and look at the data within the histogram, you can see that most of the data is pushed to the far left, meaning that the left hand side of your histogram is where your shadows and dark areas are going to be in your image. Now, if you look at this image here, you can see that this is an overexposed image and the data is so far pushed to the right that we even have data that's falling off of the graph. That means that things have clipped beyond measure and it is very difficult to get that stuff back. That's why it's critical that we're on location. We're trying to get a beautifully exposed photograph that balances that histogram very nicely. It's a good idea to shoot with the histogram or at least check the histogram after you shoot to ensure that the data is not pushing too far to the left or to the right of that histogram so that you're not losing data or detail. So then why do I have three of these exposures here? Well, there is data that is in this brighter area here that is not in this image and not in this image. And therefore, when we merge to HDR, we're getting the best of all three of those histograms smashed together. The benefit of shooting for HDR with three bracketed exposures. This is not an HDR tutorial, so don't be expecting that. Let's now talk about this histogram and the three things that you might not actually know about it that will help you edit beyond this cool little graph. The first one I want to talk about is a highlight clipping warning. Now, I did say and suggest that in these images, this is extremely overexposed. How do we know that? Well, we know that by looking at it, that this is too bright. But if we click this little triangle right here or press the O key as the hot key is showing us, that will turn on a clipping warning. That is telling us that this area in the image is so far blown out that there's no data there. That red strip is basically saying that that data is gone. Now we can try to maybe reduce the exposure to get that back, but look what happens when we do that in this image. We're never really truly going to get that back. We can try to push the whites, but this is lost data. This is data that we cannot recover. That clipping warning helps us see that. Now, if we go into this image and we turn on the clipping warning on the other side or the U key for the darkest dark areas, you can see that even in this underexposed photograph, we still are not clipping beyond the realm of measurable data. But if we were to take the exposure to the left, you'll start to see blue creeping up here. That blue that's creeping up is clipped or lost data. So, if you open up your images in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, both of them respond the same way. With these clipping warnings on, it'll tell you right away if you have over or underexposed areas. Now, take this with a grain of salt, okay? While it is data and it is helpful to see those warnings, there are some images that actually benefit from being brighter. Think of a high key image, or there's some images that benefit from being darker. Think of a low key image. So don't let that convolute your artistic vision for what you might've had while you were on location. It's okay for things to be blown out if it's a deliberate blowout. The second thing that you might not know about this histogram that I just recently figured out completely by accident I don't know, a month ago, is that you can actually edit your image 
with the histogram. This is a kind of moment for me. So let's take a look at this hawk, for instance. We look at the data here and we see that the data is pushed far to the left. I want that to be a little bit more bright. I deliberately did underexpose this image knowing that I could rely on the raw data because I did not want the chest of this hawk to blow out. So if I want to edit with the histogram, look right here. Notice that as I have my cursor hovered over this section of the histogram, it says exposure 0, 0.00. If I move over this section, it says shadows 0, blacks 0, highlights 0, and whites 0. So if I click, and I move this, I'm now increasing the exposure or forcing that data to move over to the right, which is brightening up the image. I don't know about you, but this to me is like, maybe you knew this, you probably did. There are so many features that are hidden in Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom, and Photoshop that sometimes when we find these are like little Easter eggs and we think that we're the first one to find them and other people are like, oh yeah, Blake, I, I knew that for like the last 17 months, where have you been? <laughs> so. I've, I've increased the exposure of this image, which has brightened up the image and made it look better. I also have the warnings on, so I know that I'm not clipping any of that data or destroying any of that highlight or shadow data. Now, if I move this over here, watch the corresponding highlight slider as it moves. When we move this over to the right, the corresponding highlight slider moves. Now, this is a small movement on the histogram, but it's a big movement in that slider. This is really interesting to see how the edits that we make with these sliders manipulate the actual data. A highlight adjustment or even a shadow adjustment is a micro or fine tuned adjustment within your highlight or shadow areas or your bright or dark areas. Let's look at the shadows. Maybe I want to bring those shadows up there, make them a little bit brighter. Notice how we've taken all of this data, which was over here, and we have forced it more towards the middle of the histogram. Now, if we go to the far right, let's say we had a, a, a clipping issue with our darks. We can move this over and ensure that our darkest dark areas brighten up or move it to the left and they darken down. Again, clipping warning coming in saying, wait, Blake, you probably don't want to do that. If you're going to be using the histogram as an um, editing tool, I would highly recommend using the clipping warnings because as you make those movements, you're not paying attention to the sliders. You're paying attention to the image. It becomes more of a hands-on way to edit your photograph without looking at sliders. You're just manipulating that data within the histogram, which is then manipulating the data in the image. So let's check it out. Let's see if we need to do anything with the whites. If I push the whites too far, they're going to blow out. I do want that brightness in there, especially in this image. That looks great. Now, the third thing with the histogram is just more of a gee whiz type of thing. But if we hover over an area in our image, it will tell us in the histogram exactly where I'm hovered over with my magnifying glass is red 190, green 154, and blue 114. Now, let's say you've got something against RGB. I know that there's people out there that have something against RGB. I don't know why I like RGB, but if you don't and you want that to be in LAB or lab mode that some people call it, which is the L luminance channel, the A green and red channel, and the B yellow and blue channel, you can press and hold right click and say show lab readouts. So now as I move that cursor over an area, it says lightness is 68, I meaning that's a pretty bright area. If I move it over here, the lightness is 99. It is so bright, we're touching that 100 mark. The A channel is one, the B channel is one. If you need a more accurate rendering of exactly where your cursor is over, that's where this eyedropper comes in. We toggle the sample overlay on and off, and if we click in a specific area, let's say right here in the eye, let's see, what is that? What is that gonna be LAB? It's gonna be a 92 luminance, a one in the green and red channel, and a 16 in the blue and yellow channel. Again, gee whiz information. Now going beyond those three things that I wanted to show you here, looking at this histogram, I found moving the tint and temperature sliders to be really interesting when I looked at what was happening with the colors in the image as I moved the tint and temperature. So I'm gonna take the temperature here and I'm gonna move it to the right and make this overall more of a yellow image. As I do that, look at how it spreads the blue and the red across the channel. It's evenly spreading the colors across the channel to create separation between the red and the blue, which is essentially making our image a little bit more yellow, a lot more yellow, way more yellow. Okay. But again, look at where our reds and our blues are touching here. This is probably not going to be a good idea to take our image to this level because now our reds are clipping in the highest highlight form of it. So bring it over here might be a good idea. Okay. 
Looking at tint and temperature, this is going to move the red closer to the green channel. And this in the magenta area is going to move the blue closer to the green channel. Just kind of gee whiz stuff that as we look at this, it kind of makes some sense as to how our tint and temperature is affecting the actual data in the image. Now to test this, let's just press the auto button here on this just because it'll get it decent for us. You see how it spreads out the histogram. Le looking at the tint and temperature here, I move the temperature over. It makes the image warmer by separating the red and the blue channels from each other. And you move this to the blue side. It takes blue and it crosses it over the red and then pushes that blue more towards the highlight side there. So just some kind of gee whiz, look at what happens with my colors type of information here. For us color theory nerds, it's actually kind of fun to look at that and analyze what's happening to our colors as they mix and blend. But the three things I really wanted you to get from this tutorial are one, turn on the clipping data for your histogram. It'll help you determine whether the adjustments that you're making your image are good for it or are making them too dark or too light. But know that yes, we still need room for creative expression. Two, you can edit with the histogram. That is so cool. I can't, I can't believe that. Like I, I, I called Matt Klaskowski. He was like, dude, did you know you could edit with the histogram? He goes, uh, yeah, where you been, bud? <laughs> and then three, if you're not a fan of RGB and you want to change things over to lab readouts, you can do that by right clicking on the histogram and changing it from RGB to lab. Hey, we're always learning something new in Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom, and Photoshop. And if you've got something new that you found, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it because I like having these aha moments and I like sharing them with you as well. If you like the video that you saw here and you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.